rise in veganism isn't the only problem when it comes to meat sales. The supermarkets are struggling with a big downward trend in sales of processed meats, recently down 15%. And one that's really taken a beating is fry up favourite, bacon. Now, I adore bacon, I love the stuff, but over the past few years, sales have been falling. We buy, per person, half the amount that we did back in the 70s and 7% less than we did in 2012. So why are we ditching this breakfast staple? A big reason why we're eating less bacon is to do with recent headlines like these, linking it to cancer. Yes, bacon really is killing us. Women at higher risk of breast cancer from eating three bacon rashes a week. Cut out bacon to reduce cancer. As well as concerns over breast cancer, the World Health Organization have declared eating 50 grams of bacon a day increases your risk of bowel cancer by 18%. The culprit, nitrite, a chemical compound used to preserve bacon and other cured meats such as ham and salami. Nitrites are currently used in over 60% of processed meats. They stop bacteria growing, giving these meats their long shelf life. But what if there was a way to enjoy our rushes without the risk? Well, one company reckons they've cracked it, so I'm keen to find out what's their secret. Oh, Dennis is cold. I've come to Northern Ireland to meet Dennis Lynn, owner of the meat processor's Finnebrogue. He claims to be making the UK's first ever commercially available nitrite-free bacon. Nitrites are a very bad chemical to eat. Yeah. Whenever somebody said, will you make bacon? Yeah. I went, I will make bacon, but I'm not going to make it with nitrites. Really? Because why would you do that? So the challenge for Dennis was to come up with an alternative to nitrites that stops bacteria as efficiently. His answer is to use an old preservative in a new way, sodium chloride or salt. It draws the water out of the meat, making it difficult for the bacteria to survive. It stops the bugs having available water because all bugs need water, like, like you and I need water, but this locks up the water in your pork and, and it, it, it improves shelf life because the bugs can't have, have anything to drink. Basically. So they can't grow? Correct. The problem is salt is much less effective at stopping bacteria than nitrites and too much salt is linked to increased blood pressure. So Derek is using technology to make the bare minimum work much harder. He injects the salt deep into the meat. The fresh pork going in, the needles coming down, injecting every single part of that pork. This is one of the needles. And if, if, if you look at this really, so this is going shh, 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 like this, right? So the water comes in here yeah. and comes out these tiny, tiny holes. Ah. So it comes out as an aerosol spray inside the pork. Wow. In fact, I can show you what that looks like. Yeah, all right then. OK, with another. Where are you with going another I'm really good at this. Hang on. Where is he going right. to the so, so this is, oh, forget the gold bit. So this is what an aerosol spray looks like. Hey, look, you see that? So that's exactly what that machine's doing inside the pork. But can salt used in this way keep bacon as safe as nitrites? Technical director Declan Ferguson is comparing the bacteria level of their bacon to some containing nitrites. So we've taken our nitrite-free bacon and then two bacons from other supermarkets made with nitrite. Right. He put samples of these three different types of bacon on agar plates so any bacteria will start to grow. After 48 hours, Declan measured the bacteria levels. And what have you found out? Each plate, although they look a little different, yeah. uh, they're all around 30,000 bacteria. And 30,000 isn't bad for you? No, 30,000 is quite good. It sounds like a lot, but actually this level of bacteria is instantly killed by cooking, so it's quite safe. 
It's one of the things that I suppose when we were trying to take this new product to market that everybody was asking, well, is your shelf life less than the competition, yeah. than nitrate bacon? And we're able to categorically say, no, we're the same. But the challenge isn't over yet because nitrites do something else to bacon. Nitrites turn pork pink and keep it pink. Yeah. So people like to eat pink bacon because they've been doing it all their lives. Without nitrites, pork will quickly turn from this bright pink to an off-putting brown when exposed to oxygen. But Dennis has come up with a secret blend of fruits and spices that remarkably keeps oxygen out and retains the bacon's pinkness. I can taste lemon. Yeah. Oh, it's strong. Yeah. Basically, it's dried fruit and spice that surrounds every molecule of that pork yeah. to stop it oxidising, so it keeps it from going brown. There's one crucial test still to do. Without the nitrites, how does his bacon taste? I'm going to cut you a nice fatty bit. OK, thanks, though. One of these plates of bacon okay. contains so nitrites, and one doesn't. A moment of truth. I'm feeling pressure. Are they both bacon? Yes. Very much bacon. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay. There's 100%. no. There's no. That tastes more like bacon than this one. Just put me out of my flipping misery. This is ours. I thought so. Okay. Uh, okay, that's fine. So what do you so, think of it? I love it. And it tastes like bacon. It's got that lovely. Mm. Dennis's bacon has passed my taste test and, crucially, is free of those cancer-causing nitrites. But as is often the way, healthy eating comes at a price. It is at the top end of mid-tier bacon. It's between three quid and two quid. In my opinion, very well priced because do you want to eat fresh tasting nitrite-free bacon? Aldi recently produced their own nitrite-free bacon using a similar technique to Dennis's, so there are signs that the price will fall. 